again, contact him to make sure. James Levin, I don't know if you know who he is. He's worked pro bono. Uh, uh, Raymond Vazavari, who was the director of the ACLU, very, very sharp man. Um, uh, Joe Meisner, who actually filed the original lawsuit in 1972 for $35 million. And um, the last person, who was that, uh, Raymond, uh, oh, Phil Althaus. So I believe we have enough people. But you know, one interesting thing about that is that, it, and, and things have changed in the last three years, is that we filed, uh, 99, we filed a civil rights action. And had the Civil Rights Commission agreed that this is in fact racist, which they did come out with a statement after we did that, after they dismissed our case for lack of probable cause. But if they would find, in fact, that this is racist, then the Civil Rights Commission would be obligated to represent us and provide the attorneys and everything. So we're going to file another civil rights action. We're just kind of gearing up for all this. And, and uh, incidentally, um, uh, Dolan is a board member of the uh, Oberlin College. And the students, the American Indian Club there, have challenged him twice. And he's made it even more, he's made it difficult, very elusive, trying to arrange the third meeting. And uh, I have the minutes from both of those meetings have, have challenged his position because it is, in fact, racist. I mean, we're not mascots, we're people. We're a race of people. And, and I don't know if you know about that red feather that Native Americans wear, but that's a feather that's given to our warriors who have shed their own blood in battle, specifically U.S. veterans. So, um, the, uh, so we, we're, we have a plan, and we're going to hopefully be able to uh, implement it sometime in, in late summer to start the process. Yes. Well, I'm not clear. Did you say that you contacted operations like the Grand Foundation or Clayton Foundation, whatever they're not being responsive to we, requests we, for grants? Or? We just didn't have a grant writer. And we approached them on a grassroots level, and they need a grant writer. All that's right. what they need. That's okay. the bottom line. They need someone that's going to write a grant. You know, we have, uh, uh, we have a we have everything. We are actually our own fiscal agent for two grants. That's major. Okay, we've passed that hurdle. We have our own uh, in-house bookkeeper. We use book, uh, what's that, QuickBooks. We can give you in two minutes a complete uh, budget breakdown on our, on our organization. So, but, uh, and that's a requirement. So we've, we've, we've gotten past that. But we just need a grant writer that's willing to spend some time with us. And somebody else had their hand up. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, let me explain that. We are all Native Americans. If you were born here, you're a Native American, okay? I like to refer to us as Native American Indians. And now, Indians is wrong because Columbus didn't find us. We found him. He was lost. He was going to the West Indies. Wrong turn somewhere. Okay, he was not a nautical genius like he's, he's depicted at. He was a barbarian. He was a saddest, sadist barbarian. He was a brutal barbarian. Wrong word to use, but he was a brutal barbarian. I get a little emotional <laughs> because, uh, you know, if you look at the history of, of Columbus, especially uh, one of his, his sidekicks or, or, or persons that was with him through um, a lot of his voyages was La Casa. La Casa wrote about him. He was a Franciscan priest and wrote about their travels. Columbus's brother wrote about it, and then, of course, Columbus himself had diaries. So if you look back at that history, it was brutal. Over how many millions of Indians were murdered? Let me think. Oh, I can't even think how many millions were murdered by, since 1492. I can't remember. It's unbelievable. 60 million? I can't remember the figure right now, since we found Christopher Columbus so, in the Americas. So uh, yes. Uh, I like to, we use Native Americans generally refer to our tribe. So if we come up to somebody and they look Indian, we don't, I don't, I don't say, what, what kind of Indian, what tribe are you? I ask what nation you are. You know, we don't, uh, you know, we don't ask, are you Indian? I'll, I'll say, are you Ho-Chunk? You know, um, or are you, what, you know, what nation are you? So we have, I guess we, we have a different outlook, but the PC is, is the Native American, and I, I don't agree with that. I never agreed with that. Any other questions? Well, what should we say? Uh, just, I mean, I, Native American Indian is probably the best. That's what I would recommend. That's what I would suggest because it, it defines us. Even though Columbus was lost and he called us Indians because he thought he's in India, um, 
it, de it defines us as geographically of this region, if you think about it. It's Amer I'll tell you why I chose that. It's called the American Indian Education Center because everybody thinks of us as American Indians. Simple as that. And yes? No, just, and that's, that's why we, we chose it. The American Indian Movement is the same way. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, you know, would you? Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you. In the reservations I've been to, and I've experienced some racism myself, which which I have a hard time tolerating, um, is that in the surrounding communities, especially where there's reservations, there's an extreme amount of prejudice. I mean, it's it's there. The the prejudice is based on well, why do they have land? Okay, this should be our land. You know, who do they think they are? Um, there's no jobs. You're not going to find any jobs off the reservation for American Indians. They won't hire them. Yes, there is an extreme amount of alcoholism there. And, and I'm, not con I'm not condoning it, nor am I justifying it. And it is an issue. But you have to remember one, one, a, a number of things. We didn't have alcohol before we found Christopher Columbus. That's the first thing. Um, there's no employment. And I'm not saying, well, okay, if you don't have a job, you can drink. I'm not saying that. That's not right. But if you look historically, even at Cleveland on the east side, which has changed tremendously, there was drugs and alcohol there. And why was there drugs and alcohol there? Because there weren't any job opportunities for these young people. Whether they had an educational background or not, there just wasn't any jobs, a place for them in Cleveland at one time. No, but, but that's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. No, that's the reality. I don't, I don't know, I, I, in that locale, you, you may have experienced something different. I have seen both. I have seen, you know, I've, I've experienced both of that. But you have to look at the history of the American Indian. A lot of these, these older men that can't provide for their family because they can't get a job, they don't feel good about that. When, when, when you look at, especially on reservations, when you look at the Sterilization Act, do you know about that? In 78 up to 78, when they were sterilizing women on the reservation without their permission, without their knowledge, okay? Um, when, you look, when you look at the boarding schools that continued on until the, it still actually continues on now, where they came in there and they took their children. They didn't, they didn't ask them, they didn't present a plan to them. They didn't say, we're trying to help you out. They took their children and they put them in boarding schools that were the opposite side of the world as far as they were concerned, because they didn't have the ability to go see them in Pennsylvania, Carlisle, in Florida, in Kansas, and took them as far away from their family, never to see their family again in most cases, and died of illnesses that we never experienced or had before. Okay, uh, there's a bitterness there. Right, right, there's a bitterness there. There's a bitterness, bitterness there that is not going to go away with time, you know, especially people our age. You know, it's not going to go away. So you have, I've experienced it. I've been, I've been in places they, would, they wouldn't rent me a car. Um, I've been exp in places that, that uh, they didn't want to rent me a hotel. Um, and I, I wasn't going to stand for it. But it just, uh, you see it all the time. 
you don't know about it, but it's there. It's there. Unless you've experienced it like you did firsthand, most people don't know about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it looks like we're never going to be able to answer all of our questions. Then again, I offer. So it only means that we have to have you come back. I offer <laughs> to have classes here, and I will. I will bring my curriculum. I will go over some, some things, and, and I'll educate you about it. Yes. Can I say, uh, uh, we're over in our hat right now, and I believe uh, a lot of people around the world know more about the history of the country than your average American person. And um, do you think that the Iraqi people feel that America knows their so-called freedom, and they know the history of this country, and they're very like leery of having American troops come over to our country to free them, still their oil, like what happened to you know, the American people? You know, I can tell you if you look back in history, I can't comment on, on Iraq, but I can tell you that if any country, and let me tell you something, out of the many many countries that I have gone to and have spoke with people, I was truly amazed at the insight and the knowledge they had of what was going on in this country, more so than we have because of the propaganda machine here. Um, but I can tell you, if you look back at history, and, and even, even uh, Adolf Hitler, he based a lot of his extermination on what they did in this country to the American Indian. Okay, uh, the, the, uh, the British, and the Europeans when they came here. Uh, so if you, if, if these countries are going to consider any aid from the U.S. government and they do their homework.